Welcome to Money Club Mondays, July 25th, 2022. So we have a couple of our, what we consider VIP borrowers on with us today. Dwight Harris and his business partner, uh, Brandon, right, Brandon? That's yeah. me. Nice to meet you. This is my first time Thank meeting you. Brandon. A lot of you might recognize Dwight. Dwight's been on Money Club Mondays several times in the past. Uh, they've been super busy. So Chris and I have been yelling at him, hey, you got to get back on. So thanks for thanks for taking the time and hopping back on. But I know you guys have been super busy putting things together and getting new deals going. And all the lenders that have worked with you in the past have been very happy with everything. So I appreciate you taking care of, uh, you know, the lenders and the, the the students and the the members and everything like that. So course, um, just before we dig into this, uh, just a quick reminder, if you were on last week, we have Lori and John Halter on the show they are a very experienced money school and money multiplier clients of ours. They've been around and working with Chris uh, through his coaching and, and working with Chris very closely on, on everything they're doing with their business and their real estate investing. And uh, they have a really good deal right now. It's the numbers are just crazy. Like it's going to be a very quick flip and they're offering a great return. They've been able to raise half the funds they need. They need like 430,000. They've raised about 220 so far. So they are looking for another 200,000 on that. And they do need to get that closed in the next couple of weeks. So if you're looking for a really good deal, please reach out to Lori and John on the private money club and we'll get that rolling. Um, and then of course you guys met Greg last week, Greg Dale's working on putting some stuff together. So we have a conversation with him and we have some other good deals coming. We did get Jared Carraway's deal completely financed. He was actually in South Carolina with me at the uh, re-up event over the weekend him and a couple of his business partners, just awesome people. So look for more and more of Jared, uh, Bobby Tindell, a guy that you're going to see more and more of. And um, we got some really cool new borrowers and lenders coming into the private money club right now. So uh, Dwight, and, Dwight and his business partner, Brandon here are a big part of that. So if you're a lender looking to lend money, um, pay close attention right now because these guys have some really cool stuff that they're doing. And I can't wait to hear about some of the new stuff that they're doing. So all right, just a quick introduction there, Dwight and, and Brandon. But um, oh. if you guys wouldn't mind kind of expanding on that a little bit, yeah. And, you know what's up? How's it going? Oh, it's going, it's going, guys. And and again, I apologize. We, uh, Stephen and Chris have been been up our you know what to try to come in and and be a part of a part of this as much as possible. So we are getting more organized. Um, we are taking on uh, new opportunities, new lenders um, right now. We have um, had actually zero lenders leave us through this whole shenanigans. I think I saw in the chat that um, you know we're redefining what uh, what a what a backward slide looks like, right? So, um, but we've had zero leave us. Um, we're blessed to have uh, great relationships with the lenders, and we've actually met several here. So, thanks for having us. Um, I promise we're going to be more around. I was telling Stephen, I said I pledge my allegiance, right? Um, to kind of trying to trying to get back in the swing of things. So we actually do have even flyers up. They've been redesigned by somebody much more talented than myself. Um, so you guys can check all those out. Uh, remember uh, with Brandon and I, and I'll get more into Brandon here in a second, but um, we do have three different types of money that you can, you can lend um, with us, right? So we have front side fix and flip money. That's first lien real estate. And we'll get more into that in a second. Um, we have second seconds, um, call it gap funding, call it whatever you want. Um, that's also on the front side. Those loans are 12 months. And then for our back side, we do have an interesting product. We do call it rental backed uh, micro loans. And these are for people that either A, don't want their money to come back in six to nine to 12 months all the time, because then you have that break, right? So you get it back in 10 months and you don't let it out for another two months. And you think you're getting 12% or 10 or whatever, but you're actually getting like nine. Um, you know, we've kind of done all the math. So we do have the uh, micro loans for the backside. The other part that's really cool about those loans is if you don't have 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 just sitting around and you want to just kind of try us out, um, or, or whatever, um, those loans are usually about 15 to 20 grand each. And um, they're usually, uh, well, 100% are in uh, performing assets, meaning the renter is there, they're paying, we take part of our cash flow um, to pay you back. And those are five to seven year loans. So um, Brandon, I want to introduce him. Uh, Brandon and I, we are from Texas. Um, we have done together, we have done, I always, I always get to the Bill and Ted's thing, like wild stallion together we make, right? 
All right, for those of you who are too old or not <laughs> old enough, sorry. We've done over 1,100 flips here, guys, in Texas. Um, Brandon has done, before he met me, several, and I have done hundreds up in Minnesota before we kind of got together. But um, our focus right now is on the Southeast. We love it. Our philosophy with the Southeast is if you can buy and be all in on properties um, for under the replacement cost, right? You just, you're just not going to lose. We're in cities out there like Huntsville, Birmingham, Augusta, Macon, um, Fayetteville, and the Triad, North Carolina. Um, I don't know why we skipped over South Carolina to start with, but we did. Um, we'll be circling back to Columbia probably next year. What we've, we've seen tremendous growth, honestly. And I know everybody's kind of got their niche on this, but uh, Brandon and I are very happy. Um, we are providing home ownership to people that honestly don't even know they could ever qualify for a home. We're doing a lot of lease options. Um, we do creative stuff like owner finance. And then of course, occasionally we just have this straight up rental property, which um, we, we, we've done hundreds of those. So that, that gets boring for us now. So we like to be a little bit more creative, um, but we talk to residents, we call them residents, not tenants. We talk to residents, prospective residents on a daily basis that are blown away by the fact um, that not only um, do we have a home for them that's beautiful and remodeled, but also one that we can help them fix their credit. We can help them learn what you know DTI, debt to income means. We can help hook them up with a backside lender when the time comes. So yeah, I, I am behind the scenes a little bit more. Um, I work a lot with the tenants. I work with our construction team. I do work a lot with our with our lenders and the title companies. I talk with sellers. And so, um, you know, I'm more on the operational side, if you if you want to call it that. Um, worked with Dwight for, you know, I think it's almost 12 years now. And our philosophy is to buy as many houses as we possibly can. And the only thing that gets in our way and the only thing that's really ever gotten in our way is just sometimes we have to pass on deals just because we don't have the right funding in place. So we don't have enough funding in place. And so our goal this year is to really kind of put an end to that. And uh, our focus is just to surround ourselves with people that are looking to work with people like ourselves. Um, we are very good operators. We have a huge track record. And um, Dwight and I had lunch with a gentleman um, about two weeks ago. He's from the Dallas area. He's done hundreds and hundreds of deals himself. He works with a very large national lender. And during our, during our lunch, he was, we were kind of talking to him about a 270 unit um, deal that um, it wasn't a multifamily. It was 270 single family assets that kind of Dwight was underwriting. And he was like, guys, I might even be interested in kind of, go, kind of going in with you guys on that deal. And we said, well, we've never done anything with you. And he said, his name was Tim. He said, guys, something that y'all have that money can't buy is y'all have a track record and experience. And over, over the thousand deals Dwight and I have done, our lenders have never lost money. Um, Dwight and I have, um, but our lenders will never lose money. And because um, we borrow from friends, family, and people that we get to know. And it's super important because our lenders become family. That's just a little bit about us and our For the record, our we've record. lost five times. Not that I'm yeah. bitter. I have them like yeah. written on my wall at this point. So I stared at them. I know the addresses. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. So. Spe speaking of your wall, I think you're the first Zoom I've seen with a spatula hanging on the backside. So. <laughs> that, that was a gift. That was a gift from one of our employees way back. It, uh, I'm a huge Minnesota Vikings fan. So I know that alienates um, quite a few people. I know. I know. I get it. But uh, grew up in Minnesota, lived there for, you know, 30 years. But yeah, so it's actually a uh, Minnesota Viking on a spatula. So and a conversation starter. And it worked. You know, we talk about it all the time. One of the biggest parts of private money lending on both sides of the fence is the relationship between the borrower and the sure. lender. So the more yeah. people get to know you and you guys experience and, and you'll eventually get to know them, you know, that's, it's all good. And that's all that uh, makes for better stuff. So, Thanks. um, you know, with that said, you know, you guys have done a lot of different things, a lot in real estate, like you said, you've done thousands of deals. And so what do you, before we get into kind of specifics of what you're doing now and what you're looking to raise money for and what that looks like, you know, what do you guys see happening with, with real estate? Like, are you starting to see any changes? What are you doing with your business overall? Like, are you doing anything different right now as you're starting to see interest rates go up? Like, how's that kind of, what do you guys kind of think is, is going on? I'll take from the acquisition side because I do run our acquisitions team. 
um, from the acquisition side, we're just, we're getting pickier, right? Um, we are, I um, mean, we're, we're getting out of one hurdle, which was, you know, the price of materials, which was going nuts. And honestly, the price of skilled labor, which is a little better, but not getting amazingly better. Um, so we kind of made it through that, the, let's call it the, the COVID hurdle, <laughs> whatever, just kind of lump all that crap out together, right? Um, and now Stephen hit it right on the head. I mean, our, our, we, Brandon and I actually do, um, we do a lot, uh, as Brandon said, with, with lenders, uh, institutional lenders, as well as private lenders, and rates are going up, right? So um, for us, that just means that um, I think there's a, there's a spot for every type of financing. I think there's a spot for every type of interest. Um, when I, guys, when I first started real estate, I mean, my first rental property I bought at, at the end of 2002, and my rate was seven and a half percent on a 30 year loan. So I always I've just been around long enough where you're starting to see market cycles. Right. So where everybody's panicking and running for the hills, I see opportunity. Um, and I'm a huge fan of going in the opposite direction of everybody else. Some of the best deals we bought, we actually bought during COVID when everybody else was kind of freaking out. So just, right. just as a recent example. Um, you know, so little things we're doing, Stephen, um, you know, we're, we're looking at different types of lending. We're looking at five one arms, seven one arms. We're looking at 30 year financing, um, you know, from from the debt side. We're, we're leveraging ourselves less. So where in the past we might have been at an 80 percent loan to value on our front side financing. We've looked at 65 to 75 percent now, um, you know, just so we don't have as high of a PITI payment to the bank um, and have have a little bit a little bit more in. Um, the good news is is our homes are still appreciating um, due to the thing I said earlier, right? Where we're buying in sub two hundred thousand dollar rate a range, right? All of our homes are worth a hundred to two hundred ish thousand. Um, you know, so if our loan amounts one forty, instead of trying to max it out and taking one sixty to one eighty, we're just we're just doing a rate and term uh, first lien on the backside and and uh, keeping everything low, right? So instead of like trying to get every dollar out of every property in a refi, we're, we're kind of taking a step back there. Um, another thing we've done is we were buying up to 250 to 300,000 for an end value. And now um, we kind of have a hard stop at 200,000 just because rates are up. Um, guys, when you have rental property, um, you know, the ratio for rent to value as you get higher and higher, right? So I wish a million dollar property rented for $10,000 a month, but it just does not um, normally, right? It just depends on kind of where you're at. But um, for the most part, we know that if the property's worth 160, we'll probably get 1500. But if it's worth 200, we'll probably get 16 or 1700. But we still have to pay that interest on, on the difference in value, right? So we're just, we're, we're looking at everything in way. Um, we definitely want and strive for cash flow on every single property, yeah. um, which is the reason why we're able to, the reason why we're able to offer the rental backed product to our private guys is that we have enough cash flow to make sure that they're, that they're made whole and quickly. So, um, so I guess a lot of different things came out there, right? So we're, we're decreasing of the properties we're buying. Um, we're getting picked not, you know, shotgunning uh, four or five years ago when rates were at, you know, 5% roughly, um, we would be more likely to buy something, um, don't call it rural, but maybe in a smaller town, right? So we're kind of sticking to our bread and butter. We're just a lot pickier. We're watching it very closely. I mean, I, I believe we're probably three months into what I, what I was kind of thinking was going to happen, right? And nobody knows exactly where we're going to be in three to five years. But, um, you know, we're, we're taking every precaution to make sure we we're in a we're in the right spot when we come out on the other side of this thing. And again, we've just we've been through this before. We went through the 2008, 2009 stuff. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that. Um, you know, I came into real estate right after 9-11. So I've seen I've seen a couple of things now. So if, if anybody has any questions of, on that, we can definitely go more into that. I mean, Brandon, what am I missing? Yeah, before Brandon jumps in, I mean, if anybody does have any questions or wants to yeah, please, on the chat. comments or anything like that, just put it in the chat box. But 
outside of that, just, you know, what, what you're saying, I, you know, things I, I like about it is, you know, A, you've been through it before. So you'd have the experience, you know, what to expect, you know, how to position yourself where if things do cool off or pull back or something happens, you're in a position where your properties are still cash flow. And so it's all good. Your numbers are all good and, and all that. And then, you know, just the fact you're focusing on that sub 200 a lot right now, and that kind of bread and butter, like you said, the more affordable housing, like affordable housing, you know, if we, if we study history, that's, what's always going to kind of remain, you know, have the, if stuff drops, it's going to drop the least. Right. So, because people have to live somewhere and, and if they have to downsize or whatever the case might be, they still are right there. And, and you guys being able to do the lease option stuff, the rent back and all that. I mean, that's all really cool stuff. So I, I love it, man. But um, yeah, anything you want to add to that, Brandon, would be great. In, in just a few words, our buy box, when, when you're, when you're looking at buying an asset, um, our buy box was a little wider and now it's just skinnier. That's yeah, basically yeah, what Dwight defined is, is we're have to be more narrow focused on what we're looking for. Um, you know, we do have two properties that are probably above 400,000. We're going to sell those as fast as we can. And that those would be the last two properties we have honestly above probably 250,000 in value. So we're just getting more selective as to what we want to keep because cash flow is so important. The only thing I want to add is Dwight and I do, um, we are part of several masterminds ourselves. And when we sit in rooms, um, I remember um, the one of the groups that we're with, he's like, look, I want to take the last hour. There's probably about 25 guys in the room. We were all in Vail, Colorado. And, and these are guys from all over the nation. And we were saying, Let, let's talk about what we think in our perspective cities, what's going to happen in the next three to six months. Of course, nobody has a, has a ball and we can 100% tell. The conversation went a lot longer than an hour because we all started talking about the history and we all started looking at what are the billionaires doing? Like, what did they do back in 2001? What did they do back in 2008? And they're all doing the exact same thing now. And they're continuing buying, but they're buying stuff um, at a smaller value. So they're not, they're not buying half a million dollar houses. They're still buying in Phoenix and in Dallas because those areas are really growing. But outside certain major markets, they're buying stuff below 250. And we listen to those guys because they've been there before. They, 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 they taught us something in the past. And so Dwight and I just follow what the billionaires are doing. And we have a lot of success doing that. What's, what's really, really interesting is a lot of the bigger buyers are actually doubling down. And I, I know I'd mentioned earlier about going the opposite way, right? The salmon against the, um, you know, the, the stream kind of a theory, but um, a lot of the times the, the, we're getting better discounts now, for example, mm -hmm. just with sellers, we do market direct to seller. Um, we do buy from wholesalers and realtors as well, but you know, we just, we just locked up one on Friday from a seller in Fayetteville and, and he was trying to get top dollar from people that would be willing to pay cash, but half of our competition now is gone. Um, you know, so we just kind of adjust everything down. Right. So when we're talking to these people, it's like the market's always, and I say this a lot, the market is a slinky, right? There's always reality and then there's perception. And if you're going up, one's leading. And if you're going down, the other one's leading. So, I mean, for us, when we're working with sellers, I mean, it helps, it helps us as buyers now, um, you know, that the news is, is broadcasting uncertainty and, and all that. So obviously we, we want to be fair to everybody, but we can definitely, you know, protect ourselves and of course our lenders and, and our contractors and everybody, right. Because our contractors need to get paid. You guys need to get paid. We need to get paid. It's gotta be a win-win for, for kind of everybody. So. All right, cool, man. Yeah, I, I love it. So let's talk a little more specifics then. So what, you know, what have you guys been working on? What do you have now? I know you said you've been creating some flyers and everything. So let's, let's see it. Let's do it. Brandon, do you want to share your screen? Do you have any flyers to? Uh, I didn't pull up any uh, flyers per se. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whatever you guys want to talk We have a lot of houses. I, I always mean, talking about these flyers. I don't know. It, 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 it took everything in my being to figure out how to post a damn flyer. And by the way, Steven, it's super easy now that I've, now that we've done it like 20 times. Here. Guys, again, we have three products that we offer to our current investors. Um, we did actually increase the interest rate for the rental back. So I think people might be excited from that. We were yes, paying 10% and that. we did increase that to 12. You know, the idea is to offer a little bit for everybody. Right. So I know a lot of people in this group have, you know, two, three, five hundred, a million dollars, whatever to lend. And that's awesome. 
Um, so we do have, if you're, if you're interested in a shorter term loan, we do have front side firsts, just fix and flip dollars. Um, we've got another one closing next week. If somebody wants in on that one, um, I think Brandon, Brandon did a, a pretty flyer for that one. So Dwight, I'll try to find that specific one. I just pulled this one up right here um, that we can kind of talk about just briefly yeah, I mean, if you want. Well, sure. Let's talk about this one, guys. So this is this is a fix and flip second, right? So this is our second product that we do offer. It's a short term, um, no longer than a year. This one will probably be about six months. Um, this is the money that we utilize to be paired with the front side money if the front side money doesn't cover all in that we need. Um, so this one's a good one if you only have um, you know, 10 or 20 grand and you want to get started with investing, whether, whether you're just wanting to try us out or just private lending as a whole, um, and you'll get your money back in a year or within a year, right? Um, so the goal on this one, it's currently being marketed for rent for about $1,500. It's in a, actually, believe it or not, um, Stephen, this is like my, by the way, spoiler alert, this is like the neighborhood that I love. It's in Macon, Georgia. Um, it's in a gated community and it's the, the value is less than 200,000 and they are the, the guards are they're man, they're serious. Like they're mm -hmm. serious. We had to fill out a ton of docs just to get renters in here to view this thing. Um, but That's I a believe great area too. Oh Make my gosh. This, small. yeah, this, this neighborhood is going to be three, 400,000 in probably the next 10 years, especially with Macon basically being, uh, becoming South Atlanta now. Um, but anyway, so this one would be a shorter term loan. Um, I believe it's 12% interest, right, Brandon? Correct. Yeah. Um, this property, it's a cute little thing. We did a total gut job. I'm trying something on the fireplace there. This is called a uh, like a navy blue kind of a paint on that old school 70s rock. So I think it kind of came out cool. Um, but yeah, so full gut job. It'll rent for about $14.95 right now with the $10,000. We'd be all in for $110, $111, something like that on a value that's worth about $160. So there's there's plenty of um, coverage on this one. So so is this so just kind of walk us through the from the beginning because I know you know a lot of people on here might be new and might not have heard you before. So yeah. on this deal right here, so your strategy is you you obtain the property, you guys close on it, do all the work, do the the, the gut job and rehab the whole entire thing, and then instead of selling it, you're looking to put a renter in it that will have an option to buy it later on. Is that right? Or yes. Can you on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's take a step back, right? So we we bought this property for Brandon. Will we pay sixty ish, right? Uh, yes, I think that's right. So we paid sixty for it. We put about thirty five into a full gut on this one. We did. Um, we always try to take care of our capex, right? So our background is in apartments. So we try to get. Um, this one, I believe, has a new roof. It has a new HVAC. It has a new water heater. Um, and obviously the full gut. The kitchen has brand new cabinets, granite, the whole shebang, right? So Brandon and I don't bunt very well. I know we just had the, the uh, all-star breaks. I'm trying to use baseball analogies here. The home run. We, don't, we try to hit home run derbies, right, as much as possible. Um, let's go with that. So we, we just, we like... We have our money up front to make the floor plan and the finish out whatever we want to do. And traditionally, we are not, we're the opposite of slumlord. Sometimes we do too much, um, but we create, as you can see, with just a living room picture and the front picture there, we, we create a very sought after product um, where, where people want to live there, right? So a lot of what we do, like Stephen was referencing, is we try to make home ownership a reality. And just being, I've been a licensed agent. This is literally July is my 20th year of being a real estate agent. So congratulations to me or not, um, however you want to think of it. Um, but being a licensed agent, there's just so many buyers out there that they, that they don't know. I mean, they don't teach um, money management in high school. They don't teach, I mean, they should. Um, they don't teach credit in high school. They don't teach you know, what debt to income is and, you know, how much down payments are and lending. And they, they don't, just, it's like, they don't teach you how to adult. Um, so we get a lot of people in that have a, maybe a 550 credit score. And it's not that they necessarily did anything wrong and they just didn't know what to do that was right. Right. So they, they come into us and they, guys, like our average household income for our rentals is like $65,000. That's our average, you know? So I think, 
you know, minimum wage and all that stuff. We'll talk about that stuff probably at, a, at, a, at another, on another Monday, but you know, gone are the days where, you know, at least for us, where people are making 30 grand and renting from us for, you know, $600. So, you know, for the most part, a lot of our people, we just, we just put a, uh, a young lady into a house in Huntsville who just got a job at Boeing and she just, she just literally had an offer letter for $80,000. And she's renting this little house, not this one, but renting a house from us in Huntsville. And it was like 1400 for the rent. So, I mean, she can easily cover that. Um, and we're getting a lot of that. But a lot of these people are blown away by the fact that we can come in and offer them the ability to buy. And, you know, so we set up what Brandon and I do is we go ahead and sign a five-year lease with them. And that gives them plenty of time. The, the thing I love about five years is it gives them, even if they have an eviction or a foreclosure or a bankruptcy, they can still qualify by the time they get to a certain point in that lease, right? So you only need two, or I think it's three years from a foreclosure, or you can actually qualify, believe it or not, for an FHA uh, government loan. You can qualify for that after two years after like a chapter seven bankruptcy. And a lot of people don't know that. So a lot of these people will come to us and will ask, the first question we ask them is, look, we're really so happy you like the house. Are you interested in buying it or just renting it? And a lot of, and like 80% of the time, these people go, wait, hold on a second. So you're saying we have the option to buy this thing? Well, how does that work? And so it opens up that dialogue and allows us to kind of strut our stuff that we've got this credit repair program. We've got lenders. We've got kind of all this all this stuff. So it's, it's been going really, really well. This loan specifically is just for the front side, but then the rental back stuff, we'll get, we'll get to hear that in that in a second. Here's just an example that we, we want to show people that you can, I talk to lenders all the time that say, look, I don't have a whole lot of money. I only have like 10 or 15 grand. And this is a perfect place to start. I also talk to people with a lot of money that would love to start just a, a relationship out with 10, with a $10,000 loan. And then we basically work it, work into something more. So we, we try to give a, a wide variety because when people think of lending, they think I have to have millions of dollars to set aside or hundreds of thousands and there's just different loan options. So this is our, this is a front side loan. Um, and a lot of times it depends when we're borrowing the money. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times Dwight and I have to just front the money and then we borrow it from the lender to pay ourselves back so that we can keep buying more properties. We can get more specifics in that if someone have, has, a, has a general question. But the majority of the time, you know, if, the, if we don't have a lender on site, Dwight and I just pay for it. Yeah. Um, so we have the financial backing to do it ourselves, but we can't do the number and the volume that we want to do without, um, without the help of our lenders. So here is, um, so that's a front side second. Here's an example of a front side first, Dwight, if you want to explain that to this one. So we are going to be buying this property and I'll have Dwight kind of explain kind of the vision, but this is a first lien um, to where we would, we'd be buying the, we would be borrowing the money to buy the asset as well as renovate, as well as renovate the property as well. Yeah, so we just picked up this house. It's in it's in the Birmingham uh, MSA. Um, it's currently a three bedroom, one and a half with that porta cache, which is way too fancy for this neighborhood. So we'll just say covered carport, right? <laughs> um, it's got the covered carport. And what Brandon and I are very good at, especially in this area, is we will actually enclose that covered carport and make it a master suite. Um, and so this house, and then. Uh, without getting too much in the weeds, the two, the one and a half bathrooms right now are actually side by side. So we're just going to enclose, believe it or not, we're going to take out the half bath because it's not super functional. You literally can wash your hands while sitting on the toilet. So we're going to get rid of that nonsense and make it one big hall bathroom. So by the end of this, it'll be a four bedroom, two bath, and we'll get that extra square footage, um, which is, which is what's going to make it a 180 there for future value. That's called ARV. 
like Brandon said, the, the cool thing about working with us, I mean, I think, I think you guys should always be careful um, interviewing the people that you work with, make sure that, you know, they're not completely broke <laughs> and they've got some kind of a game plan, right? So for Brandon and I, yes, we could fund this, but I think we just truly enjoy involving lots and lots of people. And just maybe that comes from our apartment days of just, I know that's a different thing, a syndication, a regged offering, right? But like for this, it's the one-off, we get to work with a private individual, and then a lot of our a lot of our private lenders want to do obviously more more deals when this kind of comes back. So this particular one is again it's a smaller interest rate um, because it's very very secured with an experienced group. Um, this project, Brandon, how long do you think it'll take? Sixty days, ninety days? Probably. I mean, we'll probably borrow. It takes longer to go through bank refinancing right now than it does to start the projects. So, you know, you'd probably have your money out for six to nine months on this type of an asset. And, um, and that's only because we have other projects start or like in uh, basically starting right now. So it would probably take a, a month or so to start. Um, and then we have to go through the normal construction process. And then a lot of the lending, they've gotten a little tighter. So we have to find a tenant first, and then we're, then we're able to actually do the refinance of this, of this property. So that timeline, I think if everything ran perfectly, you're looking at probably four to five months, but I would estimate but six it to never nine does. months right now. <laughs> no, it, unfortunately it never does. I mean, I, yeah. everybody's heard horror stories, but it, it, it takes time to do it right. And, um, you know, our crews are pretty busy right now. So, but Stephen, this is a perfect example of a sub $200,000 property that, yeah. that, that we're looking at. Um, if the world went absolutely crazy and it's already pretty crazy, you just, you're not going to really, Dwight and I do not see that you can lose on a property like this because you can rent it. You could sell or finance it. You could lease option it. You could just flip it if you absolutely had to, because if you worked, if a husband and wife worked at Walmart, they could qualify to buy this property. So it's a, we believe it's a very stable asset to own. And so we, our goal is to buy this, to buy as many of these as you can, because if we tore this to house down, we could not build it for $180,000. This is what we as a company are striving to continue to buy over and over and over. So just to kind of recap that, so what they're doing is they're using private money. So if you had 120,000, you wanted to lend on this deal, they'll take that 120, they'll, they're they gonna rehab the property, they're gonna get a renter in that property. And then the initial exit strategy is to refinance it at the bank for the long-term financing. And then that renter would be a lease option, right? Or is this just a straight rental? It depends, man. A lot of the times we try to do lease option first, but if for some reason we haven't found anybody that does inevitably want to buy it eventually, then we just open it up to all the all renters. But either way, the cash flow is there and it makes yeah. sense financially. Correct. Our, so, our so, renters, so the talk off there is um, that, that for example, that... Um, on the on two two slides ago, it was fourteen ninety five. We were marketing it for. If that person wanted to come in and just be a renter, um, we add a hundred dollars. So okay. it actually cash flows better as a uh, just a straight rental because we know that type of person might cause us a few more problems than somebody that's lease option. And we get that one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, no, that that's cool. Yeah, because a lease option, mm -hmm. they they think that you know eventually they're going to own the house. So they're willing to keep better care of it typically, you know, yeah. maybe do work on it themselves because they know they'll own it. So it makes, makes a lot of sense. So one question I have is, you know, you mentioned that the banks are kind of getting a little restrictor right now, you know, requiring a tenant be in there. Do they need the tenant to have any kind of track record of like several months of payments or what do you kind of see happening at the banks right now? I'm just curious. Not, not really. They just, they just need somebody in there. Um, if it's not rented, they'll give you instead of a 75% loan to value, they'll, they decrease it by 10%. So they'll literally drop it to a 65% loan, loan to value. And um, I mean, Dwight and I are actually closing on one today. Um, they're loaning us a hundred thousand and it appraised at 170,000. So, you know, I mean, it just, he, Dwight had mentioned earlier that sometimes we're not, we're not maxing out our loans anymore. Yeah. So that's, that's just, that's just an example of, we try to be somewhat conservative when we can. And cause our, our PITI, our principal interest taxes and insurance on that property that we're refinancing today will be $770 and it'll rent for about 1595. Yeah. 
So we're going to have, you know, over $800 of cash flow in just that one problem and that one asset. You know, if we would have maxed it out, we might have been closer to a thousand and PITI, but we would rather have the extra cash flow. Steven, I think we've had one lender ask for the second month's rent, like proof okay. and, and answer direct answer your question. But for the most part, they just at least to check off the box. What are the interest rates for a rental property right now? Depends on uh, LTV, credit score, all the things. What are you guys? What are you guys getting? Seven, seven and a half. Okay, that's right. For us, we get hit because our loans are smaller sometimes. You know, so like if we were in Sacramento and our loans were six hundred thousand for rental or whatever, um, you know, then we'd probably get a little less. But for the most part, like seven, seven and a half. Yeah, I see. You have something else up on the screen. So so far, you have. A second position loan you can do if you have a smaller amount of money in that ten to twenty thousand dollar range, that basically that money's being used strictly to in the rehab cost of of doing it. Yeah, um, and that's short term, like you said, six to six to twelve months. Correct. And then you have you could finance the entire purchase and rehab, which is you know that hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand range. You guys exactly. have properties assets available, um, and that's again six to twelve month range. And then this is a third type of lending opportunity that you have right up on the screen, right? Yeah. So we're trying to confuse it for everybody. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully we're now. So uh, Stephen, this was, this was my brainchild. So if anybody on here is confused or, or, or mad, yell at me, not Brandon. Um, but what we did here, like on that last deal that he just shared with you today, we're going to refi at about a hundred thousand, right? But we're all in on that property for about 120. So Brandon and I right now have $20,000 tied up in that property that we're not taking out on the first, right? Um, so in reality, you know, because Brandon and I are not billionaires or even multi, multi millionaires, no, yeah. we don't want to leave $20,000 in every property we're buying because we're buying a hundred a year, right? So that would mean we're leaving about a couple million dollars of our own cash in these properties. And we kind of want to stay obviously cash, cash rich, as well as real estate rich. So um, I came up with rental back micro loans. And again, so this product is usually a lower amount. We never, we never borrow really more than 20,000 for these um, because otherwise our cash flow can't cover it. And we don't want to ever strap ourselves, which would potentially not end well for, for anybody. Um, and they're great for people that want their money out longer term, right? So we've heard a lot of our investors right now, they'll give us 20 grand, they'll get it back in nine, 10, 11 months. And they're like, well, <laughs> private, I'm the same way, guys. Like as a lender, it's like, I want my money back, but then when I have it back, now I want to lend it again. So I'm never happy, right? So we get people all the time that are like, hey, I just got my money back. It's only been 10 months. How can I reinvest it quickly? So I started putting those two together and it's like, you know what? If we came up with a product that would allow people that wanted to either try us out or maybe didn't have a hundred thousand dollars to lend, first of all, and then number two, you combine that with you know people that just want a steady return for a longer period of time. That's what this is, right? And and it's pulling out equity. It's it's uh, Brandon and I basically have left money in these properties. So on this particular deal, it's in Augusta, Georgia. We have about $20,000 of our own money in this property. You can see the first lien right now is probably about 110, 112, somewhere in that range. It's worth about 165. And so you would be second lien position at 12% interest. And we would be using our cash flow in this particular one because, as you can see, um, we're getting 1545 in for rent. And I believe our payment, I don't think it's on there, but I think our payment's like seven or 800. That's correct. So we would take. The, we're basically willing to give up interest plus cash flow to get our money out because now we can take that money and go buy another one. We're just playing the money game. We're just moving it to new properties constantly. It's something we've done our, our whole career and it works out fantastic, but it all goes down to the buy box. And then are we cash flowing? We have to cash flow because we need to protect ourselves and then protect any private lender that does this. So, and, and honestly, people love it. They love it that it, it's great for a first time person that maybe just wants to pull 20 grand from their IRA or somebody that has 15,000 that just has that in cash, or maybe they've 
maybe they've done a series of loans at 100, 200,000, they got 600,000 out and they really only have an extra 50,000. Um, then you could go do a couple of these. And then the cool part is it's out for like five years and you get, you just get checks. Right. So anyway, um, Brandon I's goal, again, um, we would have that money back within five to seven years to the investor. Traditionally, it is five. Um, but uh, we did, we were offering this, Stephen. It was principal and interest at 10%. Honest, failed accounting a couple of times back in the day, right? <laughs> so let's just keep it easy, percent interest. I don't feel like doing the amortization and, and all right. that fancy. So we, we did increase it. Um, because I'd really rather have our focus on buying houses and making sure we get quality residents rather than doing ninja math. We had a gentleman from the money club. Um, he gave us a hundred thousand and he did five of these because he wanted to spread out his money, um, 20,000 over different properties. Yeah. Um, and he, he liked the fact that, um, he was diversifying, you know, and uh, basically his hundred, his hundred thousand dollars. So that's just another way to basically look at it. If, if, diversification is important to you. Yeah. So the only question I'll have on this is, you know, people get a little worried sometimes when you, you know, in second position, as opposed to having a first lien position on the property. Um, can you just kind of explain a little bit about that? Like what would happen, like how they're still protected in the second position? I mean, you're going to be covered on the insurance. You're, um, they are, they do have a deed recorded at the county level. Um, and if for some reason the property was not paid, it would go back to the bank and the bank has a ton of equity in this property. So everybody would be made whole. You want to be careful at second liens whenever you're providing a potential lien that's, um, that would bring the loan amount more than the value of the property. That's where people can really get in trouble with these things. Um, if you just doing, doing the math on this, um, if someone gave us twenty twenty thousand dollars, we'd still have a loan amount less than one thirty five, which is about eighty, which is about eighty percent of um, of the actual value of the property. And I mean, we never Dwight and I absolutely don't buy based on appreciation, but I can probably put twenty thousand dollars on the line that in five to seven years this thing will be worth probably north of two hundred thousand. Um, and because these assets at these values are only going up um, because this is what people can afford. Yeah. That's why we're buying them, but we never buy it based on appreciation. We buy it based on um, the hope that it, that it does, but we buy it based on that, uh, based on the cash flow. So yeah, no, that, do that's I, great. anything I mean, to add to that? You're still on the insurance, you're still recorded. I mean, you're still protected. Yeah. I mean, all second position means is if, a, you know, if, if the payments did stop and the bank forecloses on this thing, the bank gets their money first. So that 112,000, right. or let's say it's in four years from now, now it's a 99,000 or whatever, right? That's right. But they get their money and then whatever that thing sells for, whether they auction or do, you know, whatever, however they sell it out, the balance then goes to the second position and then any other loans. So as long as you have the value in the property compared to what the initial first lien is and then how much money you're lending. So only 20,000, like you're saying, you still have plenty of money there. Well, you, your money's protected if the worst case scenario did happen. So there's different second lien positions you can be in. And, you know, this is one of the ones that I would feel comfortable doing. Absolutely um, correct. And, and you definitely want to make sure that the rent is there. And as you can see, this one actually is a lease option property. I've had people ask me that before on the second liens and, and it really, it's, it's just down to it's down to choice, right? So a lot of times on a first lien, you're not going to get paid as much. And then the extra interest is kind of for that potential increased risk, right? So, you know, for us, whenever I lend, it's like, look, if I get, you know, I, I usually do about 8% and 12% for mine. So like a first lien, I'll pay out eight and, or I'll, I'll ask for eight. And then, you know, for the second, I'm 12, just because of the increased risk. But, you know, if that's, if that's of an issue to anybody, I would just, I would just do first liens. That's the reason why we have all of these products. They're right. column products, right? We have choices. Um, you know, we we've had some people that are just not comfortable with second lien. So they're just like, hey, I'd rather, I'd rather just do two or three with you because I only quote unquote only have, you know, 300, 400,000. I'd rather do first lien position and great. Like that's that's fantastic. I mean, we're very flexible. This one's just great if you don't have it or you don't want your money back all the time. And uh, rental back kind of came way back 
um, with Blackstone back in the day. They, they're, they're big on, you know, you've got not only us accountable, but you've got somebody in there that's also paying. So it's kind of like a twofer. So you're getting your getting yourself kind of covered. I like the smaller, you know, the smaller investment amount. We have a lot of that. We, we've had a lot of interest in this, which is the reason why we keep doing it. And this is kind of our, our private lenders were asking us if they could have a longer term, smaller. This is exactly what people were asking for. And we've already yep. had a lot of interest um, from these Monday meetings as well. Yeah. So, so here's just how another many example. Properties do you guys have right now? Like how many do you have available? Like do you have, if somebody want to lend you money right now on one of these products, like do you have stuff available right now? Yeah. You constantly. Hence, have new stuff? hence the flyers. That's why we're all excited because we yeah. actually have flyers. We've got, uh, I would say, Brandon, what do you think? Like 30 60, loans available? <laughs> about 65 properties. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have we have a we have a lot of properties. Um, again, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, I could show you this document right here. I'm not going to open it up because it's got some personal stuff. But Dwight and I have hundreds. We have probably more than eight hundred thousand dollars of our personal money in properties right now that we just want to get. We just want to move money. I always tell people we don't flip houses. We flip money. Right. And I can't that there's just nothing more true than that. And um and so at the, at the end of the day, here's just another example. Um, but, you know, if someone comes to us and says, look, I have a million bucks. I want to do this. I could, I could easily take care of a million dollars probably within probably two weeks. So we have a lot of stuff available. It just depends on, it depends on what um, the lenders looking to do and what's important to them. All right. Awesome. These are, we're very proud. So don't hate on it. I love the chat. Yeah. It's kind of quiet. So thank you for that. Um, everybody's just blown away by our artistic skills. Um, these are, uploaded. this is our, my mother-in-law, <laughs> AKA mother-in-law. Yes. She, she yes. finally took it over, said, boys, step out of the way. Um, these are uploaded though. So, and there's more. Yes. So Mark, um, I believe there's nine. How many are uploaded, Brandon? I think there's six or seven is uploaded. Um, yeah. I need to upload another first lien. I need to, we're going to need a, was it one? I have to go look at my notes, either 125 or 150 on third street. We need to upload another first lien opportunity that That's we have idea. right now. Um, and it's, it's in Alabama. It'll be an 8% loan. I have to go back and look at my notes, but um, we're, we're going to, we're going to get better at constantly keeping this updated and once we build a relationship with somebody, if you tell me what you're looking for, um, you know, I, I try to, I always try to give the people that we're working with first dibs on everything to keep their money constantly moving. So that's very, very important to us. Yeah. So Mark, if you go on there and you see a flyer and you, you know, you don't like that side of the street, we probably own the house on the other side of the street. So just ask. <laughs> yeah, it's getting, it's getting that crazy. This, this house he's showing you, we own the one next door. Literally. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. We own and we're selling the lot behind that one. Yeah. We have another one in Augusta. We have one in Huntsville as well. Um, now, do you guys personally go see all these houses first or do you just have teams in place or both? Both. Yeah. Steven, there's one in Augusta right now that I, I, I draw all the floor plans, right? Because my, my goal is to maximize the, the space. And so there's like, there's one in Augusta that I'm having trouble with just from virtual walkthroughs, videos, stuff like that. So Brandon and I do, um, we do site visits once a month right now to all the properties. So we just kind of do a big tour of all the cities we're in. We meet with the GCs, we meet with the property managers, we meet with anybody of the team. We have people that draw, we have people that do you know, foundation, I mean, inspections, all the things, right? So we, we do a big, um, you know, rodeo, <laughs> like once a month, we go, we go check them all out. And uh, for the most part, one of us has seen every single one. You got to get Got to get one of those big buses, put your name on the side of it. <laughs> Seriously, right? <laughs> what it's kind of coming down to. No, this one's, uh, this one's in Huntsville. Um, this thing is appreciated. When we first bought it back three, four years ago, it was worth 110. And just appraised at 199. That's what I've been telling you guys. If you if you invest in properties that are worth less than 200, when they become worth two to 300, people that work at KFC, by the way, is paying twenty dollars an hour if you want to go fry chicken. Which means that two people that work at KFC can actually qualify to buy our house, which is exactly what I want. We have four 
in Texas. I'm not sure if we have any lending. Brandon, do we have lending opportunities? I, in uh, we have one in River Oaks, Texas. I don't mm -hmm. know if we have any money in that deal or not. Yeah. Um, Mary, the, the reason we love Texas, we're from Texas, where we've yeah. done the majority of our investing. But one of the problems is, is we own a property in Argyle, Texas, for example, that it's probably worth three, 325, Dwight, 350, somewhere in there. 360, I think now. Okay, 360, but it only rents for $2,500 a month. So I think we cash flow less on that house than we do on the one in Huntsville. That's you know, only, that's, that's only worth one something. Yeah. That's only worth $200,000. So we took, when Dwight and I sold, we had about 12 rentals. We sold all of them and we moved to the Southeast because that's where the hedge funds were buying. And we have a lot of relationships with them and they have billions of dollars and they have a, they have a very large market research team and um, we don't. So we just basically listen to their market research team as to where to invest. So you know, they, they say if, you know, if they're building a new Walmart, it's probably a decent area to start buying. So I think we all kind of know that, but we, we just listen to hedge funds because we have very good relationships with them. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not easy to get where we are. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, John, the, the renter thing, Stephen, do we have time to get into that? I saw it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No. So a lot of different things come into play here, right? So I, I believe that um, in certain areas, we're actually going to become more of a renter's market. Um, at that same, actually that same mastermind that we were at in Vail, um, a lot of those guys are looking at um, England uh, and London area as far as like where we're going to be. Um, so that was very, very interesting to, to hear. Um, also, whenever markets start to slide, traditionally more renters do end up in the flood of things. So our like finding renters guys has not been a problem. I mean, we put one of our properties on Zillow, Facebook, Marketplace, Zillow, sometimes Craigslist, and we put a sign in the yard. And we just did that last weekend. And we had 109 leads come in of people that want to rent it. And we're not even on the MLS. We don't use realtors. We don't do any of that stuff because they just get in the way. <laughs> they, 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 they piss me off. So we just, we leave them totally out because I am one, so I can say that. Um, but we just, we just market it for sale by, or for rent by owner, basically. And we have hundreds of apps to, to the point where we're trying to find a way to automate that system. So we don't have to talk to all 109 and we're, and we're getting much better at that as well. So um, the renters are not a problem. Um, rents are going up in the areas we're in, in the double digits right now. Um, and it's just becoming more and more and more. And, and it's little things that we do too, guys, like it's our buy box, right? So we don't buy 600 square foot places. We buy for the most part, um, 12, 13, 15, 1800 square foot places. We try to at the very least have a second bathroom. Um, so if there isn't one, we make one, um, mm -hmm. hence the floor plan changes. Um, we buy in areas that, um, you know, are appreciating just for rent and for that. Um, we don't buy in rural areas right now. It has to have less than half an acre. It's less than 200,000 for a purchase. Um, so renters is a huge conversation. If you, if you, if you want to hit me up on the side, I'd love to give you the full hour spiel, but um, renters are the least of our worries when it comes to this model, for sure. As long as they pay on time. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, not all of them do that, but all, for, the most, yeah. for the most part, they do. And we have systems around that, too. And um, yeah, rent skyrocketing in some markets. Yeah, sure. Oh, for sure. And, and we've seen it everywhere, right? Everywhere. Um, and, and it's just that, you know, people are going to have uh, disposable income with with the with the minimums going up. And, and again, um, for the most part, we're looking for people that really do appreciate our level of finish out. And we have so much competition. Like we had to turn somebody down actually this morning for a rent because they owed a past property manager money. Um, so we're not letting just anybody in. And it's just back to supply and demand, right? If you have 109 people that are interested in renting, um, you know, or lease optioning that home, then you, you can be really selective, which is nice. And we're not in any hurry. I mean, you know, we don't want to just get somebody in to get somebody in because guys, this is, you know, thank you for the kudos. I mean, this is 
to find a property and then draw it and do it right and, and, you know, find the right money partners and then, you know, make sure your finish out looks great and, and you in adding a second bath and, and then marketing appropriate and doing professional photos for that. It's, it's a process. So the last thing we all want to do, we all like the joke internally of our company is the reason why we do what we do is to get a deserving resident that will take care of the home and eventually wants to buy it. Like we really want that person we kind of took our experience from flipping all those homes into this because if they're just kind of if like we had a we had a resident the other day that was uh, hating on our our I think it was like our floors or something and they just weren't the right color they didn't match and it and for us it's like okay cool you don't appreciate it buy you know we're not gonna we're not gonna give you a concession because you don't like our paint like that that person is going to be more trouble than they're worth down the line um you guys have all heard the saying square peg round hole right i mean that's exactly what that is so just through our flipping experience if somebody comes in and they're not appreciative of the opportunity and the asset they're out so that's that's really kind of helped us um have a lot better track record with the people that people that make it no, I love it. I mean, being at that event this weekend in South Carolina, I was in Columbia and they have a great meetup, uh, you know, real estate investment group there called uh, Reup, And just people from a lot of people from North Carolina, like Fayetteville area and, yeah. Michigan, and, and a lot of people coming out of Georgia that were there and all through and just that, that market's just so great right now. And, yeah. and especially right through Alabama, I mean, and a lot of people doing stuff there. So you guys are in the right spot, I think at the right time. And like you said, with rents just continue to go up and making it harder for people to buy, like it's just a great product you guys offer. And you can tell you really care about what you do and you have a lot of passion in it. And that goes a long way. So thanks, I man. love what you guys are doing. And I love that you're part of the private money club. So thanks for, thanks for that. You know, we appreciate it. And then hopping on here and educating people. And I look forward to having you as a regular, uh, you know, a regular guest on these things, you know, whenever we can get you on, you guys can get you and get you over here and, and we can do, you know, more trainings, you know, to let us, so let us know, you know, everybody that's watching right now, what do you guys want to learn about? I mean, yeah. you have Dwight and Brandon here with all this experience and, you know, what can, what can we kind of, you know, show you that would help you guys as lenders or help you in your businesses. And as we build this relationship, that just helps everybody involved. So yeah, whatever we tell you what not home. to do. What's yeah, <laughs> we got a whole list of what not to do for damn sure. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, uh, and that's for real, right? I mean, I've said that before. I mean, Brandon and I are not on here just to try to get money, right? I mean, we want, we truly want to provide value. We love Steven and we love Chris, right? So, um, you know, if you guys, Brandon's done mobile home parks, we've done an apartment complex together. We obviously own a successful lease option business now. We use Used to be one of the largest wholesalers here in Dallas. We were literally wholesaling 300 houses a year. Um, I've done college housing. Um, the, really, the only stuff we haven't done a lot of is build to rent. And uh, what else, Brandon? Maybe like RV parks, strip yeah. malls. Strip malls, more yeah, on the commercial side. And we're yeah. we're starting to look at that again. Um, but the market, you know, the market's constantly changing. So every once in a while we have to change. It's not something that we sometimes we choose to do is sometimes that's what the market tells us to do. And our buy box will change again, but right now it's shrinking. So we're just constantly, you know, that's why we're part of other masterminds and meetup groups as well, because we want to know what's happening. We want to, we want to know, like, is there an opportunity out there that we should be tapping into? And, um, but our focus has always been be very, very focused and very narrow. Don't try to go do everything and be good at everything. Just be great at one thing. And that's what we're doing. Um, with interest rates rising, um, somebody's FHA mortgage payment is actually about the same now as what we charge for rent. Sure. So one thing we hear a lot, um, you know, like, let's say you get a 6% rate. That's the only factor, by the way, that you can multiply the thousands by six. So if somebody buys a $200,000 house at a 6% rate, that's um, $1,200 for principal and interest called another 200 for taxes and insurance. So now you're at 1400 plus you have mortgage insurance because you didn't put 20% down. So that's going to be another 150 to $200. So now you're, now you're literally for your mortgage payment on that house, you're going to be paying 1600, whereas our rent is 1595. So for us, it's, it's actually making it even easier. And that, and that's, what's going to happen guys. Right. So like, that's why people are going to start choosing to rent because rental prices are actually the same or even less potentially than what, what they're going to be able to buy stuff for. Right. 
So, cause it's like going to the car lot, right? How much is it? You know, you know, I mean, I know all of us probably care about how much it is total. Right. But a lot of people are like, how much is it every month? They just want to know what their monthly is because a lot of people think of their life in 30 day segments. So when, when renting starts to become 1600 and owning becomes 2,400, people are going to be forced to rent, um, whether it be perception in their own mind or reality. So we're, we're just, we're accumulating as many properties right now as we can. So when people get there, we'll be there. Yeah. So. Yeah. When I, when I was in high school, my dad had a, a buy here, pay here car dealership. There and you go. go. We would do 29.9% interest rate. Yeah. So buy here, pay here, these cars. And, you know, we would do like a promotion where we do like 0% interest, you know, just to like try and move some cars. It made no difference. None. None. They don't, it's just, they want to know, well, how much did they owe each month? How much yeah. was the monthly payment? So, I mean, there's a whole, you know, it's in, we can teach them financial education at some point, but yeah, people got to live. So that's, uh, that's what it's all about, but you're absolutely right about that. And yeah, it's, it's interesting to watch this market change right now. I love you guys are on top of it and, and attending masterminds. I mean, that's so important. We talk about that all the time also. So keep, uh, keep up the hard work guys. I appreciate you guys and everything that you do. Yeah, it definitely helps to be full time, right? If you ever get any somebody that's oh, yeah. doing this for a side hustle, it's just it, oh, yeah. especially in when markets change and you stop kind of riding the wave, you definitely need somebody that's focused. So cool. Well, if you guys want to reach out to Dwight and uh, Brandon, you guys know how to get a hold of them, Private Money Club. Do you have an email I can put in here or something? If somebody want to reach out to you, Dwight? just want to give them the the info or yeah, just uh, this goes to both of us. So if you want to swear about Brandon, don't do it. Um, there you go. Or me. Info at simplehousesolutions.com. So you give those guys a shout or reach out on Private Money Club and start developing that relationship. Lots of different options. I mean, who knows when you have $20,000 that comes in and you're like, shit, what do I do with it? Well, yeah. if you have the relationship built with them already, then you're ready to go with it. Deploy it out. Let it start earning money for you and sit back and relax. So, all right, yeah. guys, well, well, I'll be in touch and we'll get you back on uh, again here very soon because that was awesome. And awesome. I'd love to keep going, but we're already a little over an hour right now. So, We'll call it a day. So reach out to these guys. Um, Brandon, it was nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure. If we can ever help or speak or Dwight, I don't mind. I love speaking in front of people. If we can ever help you at any of your events, just let us know. Happy to I help. just like to hide by my spatula. So <laughs> I'm it's obviously it's very, very shy. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Right. The beatings will continue until morale improves. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, have a great day. Awesome. Thank Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. All right, thank you. Bye -bye.